Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you and we're going to be sort of posing the question and diving into this subject and we're going to be posing, all right, is the ammunition situation getting a little bit better? All right, our ammo price is coming down, is availability getting better? Uh, we're going to dive into this subject a little bit. I think the news is, is promising, but we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll get into this. Maybe your opinion might differ, but uh, before we get started, though, I'd like to thank our friends at Arkin Optics. They have some great budget optics, and we really appreciate them supporting gun gripes. Um, Veteran-owned and operated. All of the optics have been designed by a former Navy SEAL sniper. Really great dude. The reticles are amazing. The build quality is great. And for the money, it's a great tactical optic. If there's some of you that are looking for that sort of thing. So if you're looking for a budget-friendly tactical optic, look no further. Check out the guys at Arkin. Really great people. And big thanks to them for supporting gun gripes. Okay, so are things getting better? I mean, are we are we there yet? Well, or, look, we're not back <laughs> in the good old days, you know, or anything like that. But, yes, the ammunition situation as far as cost goes is definitely better than it was, dare I say, six months ago, yeah. even. I mean, much better. I mean, like, I can think of a couple of examples right off the top of my head. All right, so six months ago, I went looking for 22 ammo just out of curiosity. Okay, the cheapest stuff I could find, like on Ammo Seat, was Arms Core 500 round bricks, $130. And this is about the time I was really starting to test the Voodoo, the v, uh, the 360, you know, the match grade 22. And I was looking for some more like Center X and 10X and things like that. Bulk plated. 22 long rifle ammunition was selling for the same or more as match grade 22 ammo. Match grade 22 ammo didn't really go anywhere. There were a few places charging a little bit more for it than is the normal price, but there wasn't this huge like 50, 60, 100% increase in the price. Nine millimeter six months ago, 70 cents a shot. Yeah. These days eh. for ball. For ball, yeah, for <laughs> FMJ. Yeah. Now it's like 30 to 40 cents. I mean, it's definitely better than what it was, but I think it's a case of common economics. The supply is increasing because the demand is kind of slowing down a bit, so there's more ammunition out there available. So if there's more ammunition on the shelves and less people to buy it, retailers want to sell that stuff, so they lower the price to get it out of here. That's get it right. out of here, see you later, bye. Well, there, there was sort of this, this thing floating around there for a while where people were saying, well, there's a component increase. You know, the cost of the components has gone up, so we're going to have to, you know, increase the cost of the ammo in, in perpetuity by mm -hmm. X amount. You know, so there was that sort of factor. And also, uh, recently, Remington has started producing ammo again. So their factory's up and running, and they're making ammo, yeah. uh, which is awesome. I mean, during that whole bankruptcy and everything, and just the entire kerfuffle, as Eric likes to say, the kerfuffle. I love that with word. Remington. You know that was a major ammunition manufacturing facility that was not producing any ammunition. Right. For that entire. And from time what period. I understand, they're back up and producing ammunition now, which yep. is awesome. Uh, so you know we'll probably see some Remington ammo floating through, which is always a great thing. Okay, so you not only have more companies making ammo. Um, obviously, even some of the, the smaller companies that are doing a really great job are producing more ammo. Um, I think there's also another sort of all-telling sign that is, is, is to, in, to factor in as well, I guess what I'm trying to say, and that is gun sales. All right, so firearm sales have started to trickle back down. All right, you know that over the last couple of years, there's been historically high numbers of gun sales. So lots and lots of folks getting into the, in the Second Amendment world, lots of folks buying guns. Okay, what do you need for those guns? You need ammunition. So uh, it obviously created a huge void in the market because there were so many people needing ammo for guns and there was a limited quantity of ammo. So of course that's going to push um, you know, the prices on everything up. Now you also know about all of the uh, supply issues that have been running rampant all mm -hmm. over. I mean, there's been food shortages. In some places, fuel prices have gone up at, in extreme crazy levels, right? Mm -hmm. So there's been... Uh, dare I say, let, let's say a lot of man-made shortages, mm -hmm. if you will, okay? And that does trickle down to raw components and things. So when you're a manufacturer, um, obviously, you know, you, you need lots of, of certain types of components to produce ammunition, right? So I can understand a bit of the price increase 
just for, for the sake of, um, you know, raw materials going up in price. And we already discussed this in a few previous videos. And I see Chaz pulling up a chart. He's pulling up the, the Nix numbers yeah. more than like. So what are the Nix numbers looking like? So just uh, for example, like, all right, at the start of the, you know, pandemic, okay, uh, firearm sales really spiked up in like that March and April, like way over the, the amounts in 2019. I mean, we're talking... 3.7 million in March of 2020, 2.9 million in April of 2020, 3 million, 3.9 million, 3.6 million. Wow. Like a huge increase last year. And then at the beginning of 2021, we went into January with 4.3 million and then 3.4 million in February. 4.7 million firearms NYX checks. And that, remember, that Uncle Sam money coming no, in, baby. Now, remember, <laughs> remember, guys, like this chart, okay, this Nick's background check chart is only the number of background checks that were run at a gun counter for the purchase of firearms. Right. Now, multiple firearms can go on one. 4473 and thus one background check. And also doesn't okay. attribute to private sales, builds, no. things like that. So th this is only a tiny glimpse into yeah. how many firearms really are changing hands. But we are lower than 2019 at, at this point. Uh, and for the last six months, the numbers have been trickling down. But getting into the holiday season, normally the gun sales numbers trickle back up in October, November, and December. Right. Um, but we haven't seen that in October this year. So maybe it's an indication that less people are buying guns and the ammo manufacturers are putting out the maximum quantity per day that they can. So the market is getting a little bit more ahead as far as supply goes. And that's where, like I mentioned, the prices have been coming down. And to be fair, okay, I did watch the video that Federal put out about their ammunition facility. Mm -hmm. I believe it was one, the president of Federal, or it was one, president, one, of the, yeah. one of the upper end fellows there over at Federal, had you know gone through and showed off some areas of the facility and like, hey, we're putting out ammo as quick as we can. I watched that video and it's fascinating. Um, I've never been out to Federal or anything. I know a few folks have, um, but they put out a lot of dang ammunition, right? We're talking a lot. Like seven million rounds of twenty-two a day by itself, yeah. something like so that. So you know? they're putting out a lot of ammunition. So the companies are gearing up at an unprecedented rate to put out ammunition. But there is a certain danger in that because if you scale up too fast and spend too much money too soon, and then the demand doesn't, you know, sort of grow along with that mm -hmm. growth in a measured way that you can really, um, you know, calculate and quantify then you wind up in a situation where you've got some multi-million dollar machine sitting there that's not doing anything and there's no one running it, mm -hmm. and that's a problem. Okay, you yeah. start having overstock, you start buying more material than you know you're gonna need, so then you've got raw material mm -hmm. sitting around, you've got ammo sitting around. Now, in this environment, is that to say that every ammo company is not going to be able to sell every single scrap of anything that goes bang right now, today, right now? Of course mm -hmm. they can, but there's going to come a time where they may have to work at it a little harder. You know, they may have to get into brass tacks a little more. Well, if you buy my ammo, you know, a little wheeling and dealing, a little more salesmanship coming into play. But right now, anything that says nine or 22, you better believe it's flying out the door. It doesn't matter if it's stuffed with rain scrap, you know, so the point is they are putting out ammo at a completely unprecedented rate. And I have noticed just to be fair. Okay. Just, just play devil's advocate here. I've noticed that the quality in some of the ammo has not been quite the greatest. I mean, you, you can tell that there certainly are some minor quality issues that have arisen from the fact that they're trying to put out just so much more. So anytime you're really increasing production a lot, you're running multiple shifts, you're training people up at a much higher rate, uh, you know, maybe you get a little bit more inexperienced labor in there. Maybe there is a few quality control checks that sort of get glassed over rather than really looked at under a microscope. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a few pistol rounds have primers inserted backwards um, from all, all brands. I've mm -hmm. seen some Winchester, uh, Federal, I mean, you name it. I've seen a few backwards primers. Mm -hmm. I've seen a few projectiles get seated a little crooked and, mm -hmm. and the crimp not quite be right, you know. And so mm -hmm. you're going to have the occasional little thing like that anytime you're dealing with ammunition. I mean, I've but seen it does it. occasionally happen. So I've seen it more with bulk ammo that just comes in the big tins, you know, uh, just loose packed. I've seen um, like the case mouths where the projectile would be sat down into the case mouth, um, typically like on the 
the reloading machines that these guys use are all in line typically not like a normal rotary type progressive press or whatnot but the powder will come down through this die and it'll expand the case a little bit and then the projectile will get sat on there sometimes the projectile gets set a little bit to the side and it'll kind of crimp down the side of the uh, case just a little bit and it'll be few. kind of wrinkled but most yeah. of the chambers you know that you shoot these rounds out of it'll still chamber and it'll probably function fine but i have noticed a lot more of that sort of issue well for sure. what's cool is when you, when you look at a lot of these large companies and, and not to get too far down this rabbit hole but i just think it's worth mentioning that when you have a camdex style of reloading press um, and reloading is really the wrong term. We're talking about all-out manufacturing, out, all out yeah. manufacturing yeah. right? And in-the-line system makes a lot more sense, right? Because if you've got a rotational axis that is occurring with your dies, right? When you look at a progressive press where the ram um, goes up in the die or whatever, I mean, so a turret press where mm -hmm. the dies are moving and you got one stationary, you know, uh, ram that just takes apart all the cycles and then you've got the round versus, you know, a fully progressive press where you have a moving shell plate. Mm -hmm. The problem with that rotational axis is that it, it can lead to, I mean, now the Dillons are great freaking presses and they're using a lot of commercial operations, but the Camdexes really do take the cake because of that inline style. So it's like, I guess the theory mm -hmm. is less movement. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be more precise and should be able to control very minute little variables with a lot less going on. So well, anytime you can, you can, you know, remove a movement from a situation and have the least amount of moving parts, you know, and those things operate really fast. Yeah. Have you ever seen a Chemdex run? It's insane how fast they can load ammo. Well, on the dies and everything, the whole plate comes down onto the assembly line. Like literally right. the rounds are going on an assembly line itself. It's pretty freaking crazy. <laughs> and it's just running along. So they, they can nuts. make ammo really, really fast. Y'all didn't know you were going to get scienced in this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's cool to see all of the minutiae that goes into it, but... Man, rotational it, axis. Well, it is. So when you look wow. at the ammo manufacturers, right, people would say, well, why can't they just buy a whole bunch more, more machines and then train a whole bunch more people and then just make more ammo? It's not quite that easy. You know, when you're on a manufacturing schedule... There, there's an entire schedule of things that have to happen. It, it's a giant plan that has to occur, right? You know, they've got to order the material. They've got to get the material in. And then machine time is scheduled, right? So when you have, whether it's a CNC machine or a lathe or whatever, and you've got an operator running that machine, that machine runs on a schedule, right? That day, we're going to be making X widget. Whatever this widget is, this machine's going to make it for this amount of time. Here's the material that we've allocated for. Here's the cart with the material. Here's the cart for the finished pieces, mm -hmm. and so on. Manufacturing is very tightly controlled on the scheduling, okay? Same thing for ammunition. They've got to get all the raw components in, their powder, their primers, and they, they can't schedule time to make ammo if they don't have everything staged up and ready and produced. So there, a whole concert of things has to occur mm -hmm. in order for them to get from raw component to finished ammunition. Remember, like, the problem that's going on right now is supply chain issues, okay? All right? Shipping delays. That affects everybody including ammunition manufacturers. So if they can't get the raw materials to produce the ammo, then they can't get the raw materials to produce the ammo and ultimately get it to market. Yeah. I mean, it's just... One I, more thing to consider you know, is, okay, if you're an ammunition manufacturer, and let's say that you have all these SKUs under your belt, like look at Federal, look how many SKUs they have, right? they got a lot of different things that they produce and lines that they're responsible for putting out, right? Well, if you can sell 9mm 10 times over for 27 cents a shot and you're making a killing on it, well, you're gonna load what you know you can sell, what you know is a high profit item. 22 is arguably probably a very profitable item for a lot of uh, firearms, uh, you know, uh, ammo companies to produce, okay? So you're gonna produce what is one, in demand, mm -hmm. two is the highest profit margin, and three requires the least amount of effort and time for your, you know, your, mm -hmm. your entire team to be able to, to, you know, if you can train someone to load rimfire ammo, and half the time it takes them to load seven mag, well then, well by God, we're gonna produce more rimfire ammo because you can sell every scrap of and it 10 times over. Now look, th this brings me to a, to a point I wanna make here about this. All right, you mentioned 22 and seven mag. All right, high demand ammunition, relatively low demand ammunition. I mean, yeah. still in demand, right? People want seven mag, they want hunting rounds. That's right. What's been an issue lately during this hunting season is finding 
hunting ammunition. Hunting ammo. You know, in large quantities like you would normally find. Normally, you'd go into like Bass Pro or Cabela's or your local shop, and you'd find, you know, all kinds of hunting loads stacked to the freaking ceiling, right? Yeah, you would so, actually have an option. You know, oh, I oh, yeah. want this bullet weight, this loading, yeah. this, this projectile, oh, this I brand. Shoot, yeah, I shoot XYZ brand, this bullet weight, you know, with, with this special load or whatever. Well, sorry, this is all we got. You and know, and in the past, generally ABC speaking, brand. you'd be able to walk in, into any well-stocked gun store and be able to go, hey, right. I shoot the A-Swift 180, 30-06, what the heck ever. Yeah. Bam, there it is. Yep. With bells on, you can buy as much as you want. So that's the thing, all right? Taking production away from less demanded items, moving that production schedule over to accommodate the higher demand items okay so why draw brass for seven mag when you could be drawing you know five cases out of the same material it takes to make or five cases of nine millimeter or maybe ten cases of nine millimeter out of the same amount of brass that it takes to draw a seven mag case you know when nine millimeter is in way more demand than seven mag is That's just right. just a, a small example not really a direct or you know an exacting example but one nonetheless and, and to be know? clear to be clear this is just more of our take on the, the yeah. situation it's not like i've called up and had this super detailed discussion with these folks so it very well could be in much different direction than i assume that it is but just knowing manufacturing in general mm -hmm. and knowing the way everything has to be scheduled out that's a highly likely scenario. Now, granted, they obviously know that getting into like hunting season that there's going to be certain hunting SKUs mm -hmm. that are super high in demand and they want to service that part of the industry because that's an important part of their customer base or people who are needing hunting ammunition for their hunting needs getting into deer season and all. Um, but it is interesting, an interesting footnote that um, the litmus test of, all right, to get back to the original question, mm -hmm. are ammo prices getting better? Well, they are. They're starting to come down a little bit, which is great. But the litmus test in this market seems to be 22, 9 mil, 12 gauge, and probably your 5.56 mm -hmm. and your 30 cal, like your, your, your M80 yeah. and then your 308. Now, interesting thing is, you know, some time ago, you could probably get a five round box of shotgun slugs for like $399, $350 mm -hmm. in that ballpark. And then there for a while, they went up to a dollar a piece. You know, you could buy Federal True Balls for $4.99. Okay, a dollar a piece, not too bad. I mean, purpose-driven uh, situation where you need a slug. Okay, a dollar for a slug, no big deal, right? Most people pay a dollar. Okay, I, I remember when they were $2.19 at Kmart. Mm. But that's neither here Show nor your there. age! That's neither here nor there. But, okay, <laughs> but the point is, okay, now most slugs are $7.99. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, yeah, eight bucks. If I only go through 40, 50 slugs a year, my slug gun to hunt with or something, what what's the big deal? But then when you think, wow, that, that's a huge price increase, mm -hmm. like to go from $5 to $8. And because in our minds, we aren't, we don't associate the expense as being something tremendous, right? So if, if a milkshake at, at your favorite restaurant was $5, but went up to $7, you'd go, well, I'm still going to buy a milkshake for $7 because I want a milkshake. But you don't realize that the percentage of increase that that is is so much higher mm -hmm. because the number is so small, it's easy to pass off as just an impulse purchase. And that's the reason I think they sell five round boxes of shotgun ammo because they know that it's an impulse purchase at $7.99. Whereby if they sold it in a 25 round box, you'd quickly go, well, wait a minute, this is 30% or 40% higher than what it should be. Yep. Because remember, you're going to spend more money. I remember a few years ago purchasing buckshot for 50 cents a load. And I'm not talking about just any, you know, white box brand buckshot. I'm talking about Federal Flight Control LE 9 pellet, full velocity, you know, get the job done buckshot. It's good stuff. For 50 cents around, $2.50 a box. Wow, that's and cheap. And I bought all of it that I could afford to buy, and we're still shooting it today. You can't... Make it yourself for that. No, you can't. If you could get the flight control wad, the powder, the projectile, yeah, there's Dude. you couldn't load it that cheap and justify loading it for. Less but than that. like that just shows you that was just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Just a few years ago, things can change so much. And look, there's a lot of older folks out there, older than us, another generation, okay, or two, that 
know what the cost of ammunition was back in like the 80s, the 90s. You know, when they talk about crates of ammo and this, that, and the other, it's like, oh my God, I wish I would have lived in those days. That was the golden day, golden years, you know? Dude. But uh, look, ammo, I think that the, the prices are going to continue to kind of come down, okay, as components and things come down. Oh, and that's the point I wanted to make about the slugs. You mentioned the slugs going up so much. Well, there's a lot of lead in the slug, all right? And if there's a component cost increase in lead itself, then obviously you've got more lead in this round. So the cost is gonna go up a lot more, you know, for that round than it is for each individual round of nine millimeter. You That's know, just true. Something to think about. There. I remember my grandpa used to, used to take me service merchandise. Oh and buy God. The five, remember the <laughs> yes. old federal bolt packs that were like the 550s and right. they had the ugly, you know, little cardboard kind box. Of brown those, and red yeah, box. Kind of brown and, and red yeah. box. And we would buy 550 rounds of federal bolt pack at service merchandise. The old bolt pack, and it was like ten dollars and eighty-eight cents. Ten dollars and eighty-eight cents. Well, well, that was Walmart, so Walmart was ten. I think they were like nine ninety-nine. Yeah, ten bucks for five hundred fifty rounds of twenty-two. And I remember, and it, when the CMP was selling all of those Kimber uh, marksmen, you know, the the Army training rifles mm -hmm. that they had, those Kimbers, uh, you know, the bolt guns. They 5, had a whole bunch cases. of Mylar pack, five thousand round battle packs of twenty-two ammo. Like and they were letting it go bucks. for, I, I want to say it was like six or five cents a shot. It, it was, was like, they were like 80 bucks, something like that. Yeah, right? 80, bu 80 or 90 bucks for 5,000 rounds of, of match grade lead nose 22 ammo. Yeah. So the, <laughs> my, my thing is, okay, people, this is just, this is the common thing with economics, all right? People forget. They tend to forget pretty quick, you know, when it comes to what things cost on a regular basis. We're gonna come back down, I think, from this ammo high, right? So nine millimeter, okay, if nine millimeter comes back down to like, say 20 cents a shot, and that's kind of where it levels out. Well, that's still way more than, you know, 11 cents a shot, or 10 yeah. cents a shot, or nine cents a shot where it used to be. I mean, 7.62 by 39, 545, you know, you're talking, used to be seven cents a shot. Now it's at the low end, you know, 20, 30 cents a shot. I, I think mean, we would probably end this gripe by just saying this. That no matter what you think the prices are going to be like in the years to come, uh, no matter how much we want to agree or disagree with this type of concept, just keep this in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. that the good old days are now. Yep. Okay. So, you know, you can't guarantee that the price is ever going to go back down, that it's ever going to get any lower. Hell, the price might go up mm -hmm. for all we know. Uh, it, it's just hard to say. It's um, like it's great. Market that there's a lot of people getting engaged in the Second Amendment world and getting into guns. And then, of course, that's going to open up an entire floodgate of people that need ammo. And that's, that's great. I'm so glad to see a lot of people mm. getting into it. But understand, it is a commodity. And commodities are limited. Uh, resources and supplies are limited. Mm. Um, so it's just one of those things to keep in the back of your mind. I mean, it, are the prices coming back down? Mm. Right now, the current indication on this day, today, is yes. Now, if something crazy happens in the world... You know, in our world, anyways, like, you know, what's been going on the past couple of years, all right, then we'll see another increase. I You'll mean, see a run on it. So, just know. again, and you never know what might happen or when it might happen. You literally, like Eric said, the good old days are now, and you just have to purchase within your limits, like we've talked about before. I mean, just if you can afford it, buy a box every week or so. You know, when you go to the store and you pick something else out or whatever, just walk on by and grab you a brick of 22, grab you a box of nine and a box of 45 yep. and just start stacking it. And eventually you'll find some for pretty cheap. You might pay a little bit more for some, but it all evens out in the end. It you does. Know? And I, I think that over time, you know, the, these ammo manufacturers are doing a great job. I'm glad to see Remington back at the helm. So they're making ammo now. They've got a bunch of different stuff they're doing. So it's so cool to see that they're trying to keep up with demand and they're responding yeah. to market and consumer demand. And uh, and that's good. It's refreshing to see uh, American companies doing well, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, like Smith & Wesson had the first billion dollar year. I mean, it's just crazy to think that's that the insane. firearms industry in terms of gun manufacturing, ammo, has just grown in leaps and bounds. And it's so refreshing to see. And it's uh, it's an uh, interesting time to, to be a, a part of that process. And to, to think that like 20 years from now, will we look back on this and go, well, man, we got really uh, bent out of shape over that ammo prices for a while, but, you know, hey, we got the price back down. Or are we going to look back and go, wow, 20 years ago, we were complaining about paying, you know, 29 cents a shot for 9 millimeter. Now it's 90 cents a shot. So who knows? 
uh, with the inflation being what it is, uh, there's no telling. That's a whole other rabbit hole. Oh, yes, it is. But thank you so much for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it and hope we, uh, you know, maybe gave you a little bit of insight in, in terms of how the situation's going, if anybody cares to know. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks so much for, you know, watching today. Again, uh, if you want to support what we do directly, there's a few ways you can do that. If you love the videos, you can go over to Blistic Inc., pick yourself up a snazzy t-shirt. Uh, those funds go right back into supporting your favorite content creators, not just us, but you know whoever you support on Blistic Inc., those funds go to that content creator, so that's a great way to support your favorite content creators. So go to Ballistic Inc., pick yourself up some merch. Also, uh, Patreon, a lot of folks donate money to us monthly on Patreon. Big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for supporting what we do. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. Take care, guys.